hello and welcome to today's video would you live in an underground shipping container house this video brings to you how to build an off-grid underground shipping container shelter safely and cheaply without cutting corners stay tuned to find out how Good, welcome back. Underground homes have been with us since the ancient times. So, why would someone want to live in an underground house in the 21st century? The advantages of living in an underground house include resistance to severe weather, it creates a quiet living space, it also offers an obtrusive presence in the surrounding landscape, and last but not least, it provides a nearly constant interior temperature due to natural installation properties of the surrounding earth. If you live in a region with extreme weather conditions, then this might just be an ideal house for you. In this video, we explore how to build an off-grid and underground shipping container shelter step by step. So feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel for our weekly videos on design ideas from shipping containers. So let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is to seek planning permission. First, get planning permission from your local council and investigate any regulations regarding the building code, domestic services supply, e.g. water, gas, electricity, sewage disposal, safety regulations. The second thing you need to do is to have properly designed house plan. Before you embark on your underground build, hire an architect. If you can't afford one, architect designed underground homes stock plans from sheltermode.com will offer an alternative affordable option. Most stock plans go for a fraction of a cost of hiring a professional and therefore can be amended on site with a structural engineer with marginal costs. So what would you get if you get an architect designed underground house? This will guarantee you the most critical elements that make an underground house function properly, such as lighting, ventilation, drainage, interior design, waste management, waterproofing, and environmental sustainability. In this design and un other underground houses, an open plan design would work best since lighting deep plans is quite a challenge. Adopt an open plan design and use interior furniture to partition and define the interior spaces of your house. This will allow for continuous flow of air and also to aid in cross ventilation, also maximum diffuse lighting inside the house. Number three, you need to inspect the containers before you use them. When buying a used container, it is advisable to carefully inspect second-hand containers prior to purchase. Old containers come with challenges of dampness, corrosion, deformed corners, dented walls, and buckled roof panels. It is advisable to meticulously inspect the containers in person before buying them. To achieve better results, buy a one-trip container if you can afford. One-trip containers are preferable because they have less or no blemish and are cheaper than new containers. If you must use old containers, consider sandblasting all the internal surfaces down to the bare metal that seal and repaint with non-toxic paint. Number four you need to do structural reinforcement to your containers. This is the most critical aspect of an underground shipping container house. Shipping containers by design carry their weight on the base and the four corners of its structure. To ensure that your new home is strong enough and safe to live in, additional reinforcement must be introduced to hold all the extra weight of the neighboring soil and underground water that will be pushing onto the walls and the roof of your container. Otherwise, the container walls and roof will buckle and cave in 
if not reinforced. Input from a structural engineer at this particular stage is very critical. So, how do you go about this? First, you need to introduce cross beams after every two corrugations on your shipping container roof to accommodate the weight load from the dirt on the roof. The cross beams should not be tucked, otherwise, they will not effectively transfer the weight as intended. Make sure they are fully welded on additional vertical supports on both ends of the container end to end. The vertical steel supports should be welded on the floor beams and not the wooden plywood floor. Introduce at least two I-beams under the roof of your container. The I-beams should be welded running lengthwise and not side to side for effective load bearing. The I-beams should sit on top of the cross beams that you had introduced earlier. These additional modifications plus insulation are likely to reduce the headroom of your container space. It is therefore advisable to use high cube containers for effective result. On the walls of the shipping container, introduce at minimum two square tube braces running end to end with vertical supports at one meter spacing to support the extra weight of backfilling soil. Again. Number five, the next thing to do is to rust proof and waterproof the containers. Shipping containers are designed to work well above ground and not underground. Therefore, to use a shipping container as a building block for an underground house, proper rust proofing and waterproofing is essential. To achieve the best paint protection results, apply three coats of container specific protective paint system. The first coat, apply a marine grade epoxy after priming. The second coat, apply an anti-corrosive metal prime to protect the containers against rust. The third and final coat is a marine grade top coat enamel that comes in a variety of colors. So feel free to pick a color of your choice. Alternatively, after sandblasting and priming the affected areas, a cheaper option would be to apply two layers of waterproof shortcrete or, or gunite on the exterior surface of the container. Once the containers are structurally reinforced and properly waterproofed, the next step is to prepare a foundation where the containers will sit. You need to dig a hole providing at least 1.5 meter wide working allowance all around the container. Once you find a stable ground, level it out with gravel for good drainage. Mark out the position of reinforced concrete piers and cast them in place. The container sits on a reinforced concrete pier foundation made of eight 300 mm square concrete piers spaced 3 meters apart, center to center, and elevated 300 mm above the gravel level. A raft foundation would also be a good alternative, but I would recommend to use the concrete slab on the roof instead. Once the foundation has dried and cured, place the containers on top with the original cargo doors facing on the exposed facade to act as the main entrance to the shelter. Number seven, you need to do an embankment around the hole that you dug. Since the containers will be used in an underground environment, underground water, moisture, and dampness must be controlled. Soil generally contains some mineral content which varies depending on your location. High mineral content in your soil might mess up your containers through the process we call electrolysis that can eat away the steel metal on your containers. We would recommend you build an affordable embankment around the containers, leaving a gap of at least 600 millimeters between the containers and an embankment. The embankment can be built using gabion baskets, as in this particular design. Alternatively, you can use old tires or sandbags, but ensure they are filled with material or soil that is properly drained. Eight, you need to do proper drainage and plumbing 
on your container. The elevated position of the concrete pier foundation will offer good drainage. This light foundation permits continuous airflow to keep the container away from moisture and also to allow for proper drainage with plumbing ease. Place a layer of 100 mm thick styrofoam all around the external wall of the container to prevent the containers from getting into contact with the soil. Install French drains under the container floor and all around the container walls at at least two levels all the way up. The more drains you install, the better the drainage. All the drains should be protected from clogging with a layer of clean pit gravel. Cover the embankment wall with a large piece of heavy gauge polythene paper and down over the styrofoam walling in order to direct water and moisture outside the containers. Backfill all the sides of the container surrounded with pit gravel for proper drainage. Install all the domestic water pipes and fall water pipes before backfilling your container. You are however encouraged not to cut the walls of the shipping container for any plumbing in order to avoid waterproofing challenges. Number nine, lighting and ventilation. With all the three sides of the container backfilled, there will be no windows nor openings. Only one side of the container is left open. This will not provide sufficient and adequate lighting and ventilation to make your underground house habitable. Additional lighting and ventilation is required. Instead of resorting to artificial lighting during the day and mechanical ventilation to regulate temperature, you can cut out the roof and install solar tubes and roof ventilators at strategic locations, preferably one in every room. Number 10. Instead of using a slab foundation on your underground house, I would suggest you pour the, the concrete on the roof instead. So. The last thing you need to do on your shipping container underground house is to have a proper roof. Seal and waterproof all the openings and entry points for water, gas, and electrical services to your house before putting the roof. Pour a 200 mm reinforced concrete slab on the roof of your containers to protect the containers and also to carry the load of the dirt or soil that you are going to use for your roof garden. Alternatively, if there will be no much activity on the roof, cover the containers with styrofoam with waterproofing seams. Cover the styrofoam with heavy gauge polythene sheeting and spread pit gravel on top and therefore you are free to cover your roof with the properly draining soil and return the dirt as you find appropriate. Cover your roof with native flowers to improve its charm. Once the roof is finished, line up the interior of your shipping container with proper insulation and give it a light colored paint finish. The main entrance door should be fitted with a full glass sliding door like in our design for adequate daylighting. Let's keep the entrance space and the roof with some flowers to enhance the charm and look of your shipping container house. So. Did you find our analysis and presentation informative enough to help you with your own underground container house? If you feel we have left out something, kindly let us know by posting in the comments below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and feel free to share it. Remember to subscribe to our channel for our weekly videos on amazing design ideas from shipping containers. Thank you for your time and see you in the next